Beloved in Christ, thank you for joining me on the Healing Streams Reflection. The title for today's post is Love is the Comforter. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, what a world we live in. Probably a better way to say it is, what a time to be alive. One side headed for glory, the other bound for hell. And both doing it with the gusto of a bound dog, wide open. That is because heaven has declared this to be the year of fullness. Not only is the body of Christ coming into the fullness of God, but sin is coming into its fullness also. That's the way it works. Stealing, killing, destroying, and all the works of hell and darkness coming into their fullness. That's the reason it's so important to preach the word of faith, healing, and deliverance. Never in the history of the human race has there been such a great time to preach this gospel everywhere. My dear brother and sister, you could sense the need, the heart of people yearning to receive the word of God. And there's so great a momentum and revival in which people are coming to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is clear that wherever the name of Jesus is lifted, good results happen because God's word works. Brothers and sisters, when the word of God is preached faithfully, more word is received by hearers, more faith is released. But when there is less word in, more fear out. There is more fear and terror available today than before. But there is also more faith, which works by love available, thanks to Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Beloved, It will surprise you that when the word of God is preached faithfully, the resurrection power of God confirms you to the extent that it leaves the devil and his demons standing totally helpless in our lives. For 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Notice he says fear has torment. Fear has torment. Not fear and torment. So fear is not one thing and torment another. The torment is in the fear. 
Now, when we look at the definition of torment, it means to put to extra pain or anguish and misery that which gives vexation to tease, harass, or annoy, to put into great agitation. So a tormentor is one who inflicts anguish or torture and pressure. In Luke 16, 22-23, Jesus described the stingy rich man who died and was in hell as being in torment. Hell is a fearful place of torment and tormentors. However, all the tormentors are not in hell. They are active right here on earth. So wherever there is fear, there is torment. Wherever there is torment, there is tormentors. That's what the devil does. And that's the way he controls people. So torment is physical and mental pressure. Pain, pure, simple. Pain always seeks relief. That's the method of control. So change to a healthy diet and pressure. Torment, unusually strong desire, comes on your mind to eat fat. And do it now. Fix it. Get up and go to the kitchen. Cookies now. Now the same process is at work. Whether it is in regard to food, drugs, alcohol, adultery, or any other sin. Torment is the watchdog that has been sent by Satan to keep you in line with the world. Get back in your cage. How can he do that to born again believer? He cannot. A fear is not present. The torment is in the fear. When Jesus went to the cross, he stripped the devil of the power of death. Therefore, Hebrews 2, 14 to 15 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, all, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So without the power of death, Satan lost the threat of death. He can't just torment someone just because he wants it. That someone must have fear present in his or her life for him to have something to work with. Now without it, he's helpless. Jesus has sent to that. Now, not only has he removed the devil's power, but he also opened the door for the Holy Ghost to come and shed abroad in our heart the thing that cast out all fear along with it torment, the love of God. Now, there is no fear in love. Of course not. Love is God. There is no fear in God. Therefore, there is no torment in God. Love is not a tormentor. Love is a comforter. Love is the comforter. Fear works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, attempting to shape every thought to the world's way of thinking. That wouldn't work. You can do that. What if it, it doesn't work this way? What about so and so? They didn't get it. Then the surrounding world confirms the thoughts fear has created. That's when one's feelings and scenes produce depression. At times like this, only the word can be trusted. Only the word can be trusted. Cut off the feelings and scenes that support the fear. Separate yourself, beloved, from the people who reinforce the fear. Always separate yourself from people who reinforce the fear. That's the reason a strong love-filled faith 
field pastor and church are so important that along with your tapes, along with your life, along with your friends, along with whatever you see on social media, all those things are not important. The most important thing is your everyday time in your Bible and prayer will keep the gifts of God stir up and the fear flush out of your life. Work at it. Please work at it. You know, fear is like a thin layer of scum on top of otherwise clear, pure water. In your spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, strong suffering, gentleness, temperance, and faith. Stir it up. You have to stir it up. Tell your heavenly father how grateful you are for all he has given you. For everything he has given you. Tell him over and over that you love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every time you do, he, love, responds. Every time, love increases. Love increases every time. As this continues, there is less and less room for the scum layer. It gets flushed out. Gone. Not coped with. Gone. Where well, there's no fear, there's no torment. Now, the tormentors have nothing to work with in your life. That's 1 John 5 18. And it says, We know that whosoever is born of love sinneth not. But he that is begotten of love keepeth himself in love. And that wicked one touches him not. And so my dear brother, my dear sister, get out of the cage. You are free now. I decree that get out of the cage. Beloved, the devil's standard for your life is fear. It has venom, just like scorpion is possessed with poison. And so today, I decree and declare that you have been set free in the name of Jesus. Where there is fear. Hope is absent. So receive that hope. That was generated in Calvary on the cross for your life. Live with it today and this week. Brothers and sisters. Take this great freedom that the Holy Spirit is offering to you through this healing stream into a terror-filled, terrified world. Take this hope and freedom and liberty. And I pray that as you allow this message to seep deep into your spirit, into your life, it is clear that it is over. Indeed, you have been set free by the King of Kings. Walk in that liberty. Walk in that freedom. Walk and celebrate in Jesus' name. Amen.